And someone just jumped on now. Yay. All right. So I am recording this program. So if you miss any part of it or you want to watch it again, it will be available. Um, my name is Lauren and I'm one of the educators at Mohonk Preserve. And I know that we have friends with us from Virginia and New Jersey today. So um, I'm in the Hudson Valley and uh, we have a nice snowstorm that happened. So uh, for those of you who are in the Hudson Valley, maybe you're taking a break from shoveling this morning or you're just all cozy warm in blankets this morning. <laughs> I'll be going out and taking care of that after this. Um, <laughs> so this morning, um, it is February 2nd. Today is Groundhog Day. So this program is all about groundhogs and mammals and why we celebrate Groundhog Day. What is that all about? And uh, why, are, why are we even talking about groundhogs and seasons? What do they have to do with each other? So we are gonna get started. Just a reminder, everyone should mute yourselves. Um, and it also helps if you um, turn off your video as well as your audio, and then to put yourself in speaker view so that you can see me and you can see um, some of the videos. I have videos that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Um, and I also have some props that I wanna share with you. So it's best if you get the speaker view and then you can see everything really big on your screen. So um, if you wanna switch to that right now, that would be awesome. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is we do have a story about Groundhog Day. We're going to learn all about groundhogs and other mammals as well. We're going to talk about why we have the seasons and what the change of seasons is all about. And you're going to get some activities that you can do. Um, some of the activities are looking for signs of spring. And as I mentioned here in the Hudson Valley, it's not looking very spring-like right now. It's looking very much like winter, but it's something that you can do as we progress through these next few weeks. We get closer and closer to spring. Spring is going to come eventually. It will be here. It just doesn't look like that right now for us here. So um, we do have a little story about Groundhog Day and what that is all about. This year, Groundhog Day um, was a little different, just like um, a lot of things are a little different this year. Um, instead of everyone gathering in this town um, called Puxatawney in Pennsylvania, what they usually do, there's usually big crowds, everyone gathers there, and they pull out this groundhog named Phil, Puxatawney Phil. And Phil will give a prediction about spring. When will spring come? Well, usually there's big crowds. This year, uh, Groundhog Day was a virtual presentation. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you any spoilers yet. I'm going to wait to tell you what uh, Phil predicted for this year. Last year, he predicted that spring was going to come early. And I know around here, it was very, <laughs> felt very spring-like already at this time. <laughs> felt spring-like to me anyway. So I am going to share with you a story all about Groundhog Day. So I'm going to share my screen with you. So again, this is going to work best if you have um, if you have it on speaker view. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Mm -hmm. I just have to click on the right thing here. There we go. Oops. One moment. One moment while I get to that. Hold on. Technology, here we go. All right, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day by Betsy Lewis.
February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Everyone is waiting for Phil, the groundhog, to wake up and come out of his burrow. If it's cloudy, Phil won't see his shadow, and he will sit outside. That means spring will come soon. If it's sunny, Phil will see his shadow. He will go back inside his burrow, and there will be six more weeks of winter. But Phil is still asleep in his dark, warm bed. Suddenly, Phil is lifted up, high in the air. Everyone cheers. No shadow. Sees lots and lots of feet, but no shadow. He looks up and sees a cold gray sky, but no shadow. The crowd shouts, Hooray! Phil does not see his shadow. Spring is on the way. Phil hears a big click. A light flashes. The light makes a shadow. Eek! Squeals Phil. He dives back into his burrow. All these years, people thought it was the weather. Now we know the truth. Phil is afraid of his own shadow. All right, that was that was kind of a fun story. It kind of gives you an overview of uh, Poxitani Phil and Groundhog Day. So as I said, normally people gather in big crowds and you saw those gentlemen with the tall uh, top hats and their coats and they grab Phil. And if he sees his shadow, then um, winter is going to stick around. And if he doesn't see his shadow, then spring's gonna come early. So last year in 2020, he, he um, did see his um, shadow, or he, no, he didn't see his shadow, I gotta get this right, he did not see his shadow and spring came early, which it definitely did around here. This year, early this morning, around 7.30 this morning, they woke up Phil, Poxitani Phil, and he saw his shadow. So that means, according to Phil, the groundhog, that we're gonna have six more weeks of winter we're gonna to have to suffer through some more wintry cold weather, according to Poxitani Phil, um, until we get to our springtime weather, which if you're around here looking outside and I see snow still coming down, it seems like that's, that's probably true, that we might get some more snow and some more cold in the next couple of weeks. So why do we do this on February 2nd? That seems like a random day to do this. Well. February 2nd is halfway between the winter solstice in December, on December 21st, and the spring equinox, the first day of spring, which is in March, on March 20th. So we are, in fact, halfway between the start of winter and the start of spring on this day. So really, spring is supposed to come on March 20th, which is about six weeks away. So I think Phil might be getting it right this year, is that we're gonna still see some winter weather right on through March, um, when spring does arrive on March 20th. So this is uh, something that we have been doing for hundreds of years. Europeans would celebrate um, the guessing when spring was going to come for hundreds of years. And um, they would do this a lot in Germany. And when um, Germans immigrated here to the US, they brought this tradition with them. And so we've been doing this um, in Poxitani 
Pennsylvania since 1887. So we've been doing this for quite a long time and celebrating Groundhog Day. So this is a long, long, long tradition. And this year he did see his shadow. So there's going to be six more weeks of winter. Hmm. So I have a question for you. And if you can, you can type your answer into the chat here. Groundhogs are mammals. This program is called Groundhogs, Mammalian Meteorologists. So we need to know what a mammal is. A meteorologist is someone who predicts the weather. They're the weather people on television. So what is a mammal? How do you know that a groundhog is a mammal? What does it have that lets you know that it's a mammal? You can type your answer in the chat or you can have a grown up help you type your answer in the chat. We'll see what, what we guesses we have. How do you know that something is a mammal? I see some typing happening. <laughs> How do we know something is a mammal? What does it have that lets you know that's a mammal? Maybe what does it do? What characteristics does it have that that is a mammal? Oh, <laughs> all right. We've got some thinking happening here. How do we know something is a mammal? What does it have? What does it do? The other examples of mammals um, would be if you have pets, maybe you have a dog or a cat. Those are mammals. Oh. All right, Nover said it has fur. Good one. <laughs> All right, I think a lot of you can probably agree that if you think of dogs and cats, um, that they do, they have fur. Usually it's very soft fur. Now, oh. I did bring some animal fur today. Oh my goodness, it's bigger than I can show you on the camera. It's pretty big, bigger than I thought it was going to be on this camera. So this is beaver fur. I was looking to see if I can find some groundhog fur, but uh, didn't find any. I found some beaver fur. This is a relative of, uh, of the groundhog. Groundhogs are actually squirrels. They're not hogs, they're not pigs at all. They're actually related to squirrels. They're a large ground squirrel. And they are mammals just like squirrels are. So maybe you've even thought about that, like, oh, right, a squirrel is a mammal, it has fur on it. This is beaver fur. And uh, it looks a little different than the groundhog fur because beavers live in the water. They, uh, they will hang out in the water. So this is kind of shiny and is waterproof. Now, woodchucks don't live in the water. They don't make beaver dams, they don't make woodchuck dams. They live in fields and they like to dig burrows and things like that. So they're not in the water, so their fur is a little different, but it's also kind of similar to this beaver fur. So that's the one I'm showing you. And you know what? People are mammals too. Now we're not furry, but we have hair. So we're mammals as well. We've got some, we've got hair. So fur, there's some other characteristics that mammals have. I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna put this, just gonna put this down. One of them is that they give birth to babies. They don't 
lay eggs. There are two examples of mammals that do lay eggs. There's always some that have that, that a little difference, but they give birth to live babies. All right, this is a baby doll, but it's, it's a baby. Now, maybe you know this, what do babies eat when they're born? You can put that answer in the chat. What do babies eat when they're born? Uh -huh. We've got an answer from William and from Daniela. Oh, had to find my other prop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. The answer is their mother's milk. There it is. Right. So mammals. The um, moms will produce milk, and that is what they feed their babies. This is a very large bottle for this baby. Um, but yes, they will drink milk when they are first born. So mammals will have fur. Most of them will give birth to live babies, and they all drink milk first, their mother's milk, when they are first born. Now, there's something else that I would be very impressed if you all got this one. I'm going to put my props down. All right, mammals also are warm blooded. So I have, and let me see if you can see that. There we go. <laughs> I have a thermometer today. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. Um, I have a thermometer today and that just shows you that we are warm blooded. And what that means is that our body temperature is fairly constant. It's a little different for all the mammals. We don't all have the same body temperature, but our body is able to regulate our heat and able to keep us warm. So if we're too hot, we'll start to sweat and that sweat actually helps cool us down. If we're too cold, we'll start to shiver and that movement helps warm us up. In order for us to keep this warm body temperature, we have to eat. And sometimes we have to eat a lot, especially if we wanna keep ourselves warm, we have to have things in high protein. Um, so we, we usually have three meals a day. You probably woke up this morning and you were hungry for breakfast. You might even be having a snack now because you're hungry again. And soon enough, it's going to be lunch. And so you'll eat again. Maybe you'll even have an afternoon snack and then you'll have dinner. So we need that food to fuel our bodies and actually to help keep us warm. If we were a cold blooded animal like a reptile, so a turtle, a snake, a lizard, a alligator, those are cold blooded animals and their temperature is not constant. It's the same as it is um, in the outside environment. So those animals don't need to eat as much because they don't need to regulate their body temperature. They don't need that energy to keep themselves warm. They'll use the sunshine. They'll warm themselves up in the sun, which maybe you've seen turtles basking themselves in a pond. And uh, maybe you've seen a snake too, that's sitting out in the sun, trying to warm themselves up in the morning. If they get too hot, they're gonna seek out cool places. So they'll go into rocks and things like that to stay nice and cool in the shade. And if they're a turtle in a pond, maybe they'll go to a shady part of the pond and they'll keep themselves cool that way. So they just move their bodies to wherever it's warmer or colder. We don't need to do that. Of course, on a winter day like this, on February 2nd, um, to stay warm, we're gonna need to put on a coat and things like that. Your body doesn't do it all for us, but we will need to have some coats to keep us warm, but we certainly don't need the sun to get us warm in the morning. Animals that are cold-blooded, they hibernate in the winter time. Our groundhogs, also hibernate. So in our story, when they talked about Phil was sound asleep, he was asleep. Right now, groundhogs are hibernating. They're not gonna come out until it's springtime. So they make these awesome burrows with lots of different rooms in them. And uh, they make those burrows and that's where they are right now. They are underground in those burrows, hanging out, sleeping. They, their body temperature and even their heart rate drops down really, really low when they're hibernating. So I actually have a fun, another fun video about more information about groundhogs. I think this lady is way more entertaining than me. So <laughs> I'm going to share my screen once again with you. And I will 
All right, I will show you. Oops, there we go. I will show you. There we go. I'm trying to show you this, but uh, just keep there we go. I'm going to show you this little clip all about fun facts. But first, I'm getting ahead of myself sharing screen. I need to do that with you all. All right. energetic than I am this morning, but she has a lot of great facts about the groundhog, some of them that I mentioned too. So yeah, if a groundhog is up on February 2nd, it's up a little too early because especially here with all the snow, it, it they are hibernating right now. So uh, they, are, they are asleep, but it's so amazing that they can lower their body temperature and their heart rate to help conserve energy. So remember, we're warm-blooded, mammals are warm-blooded, and we need to eat to keep up our energy and to keep our bodies warm and 
animals that hibernate are able to slow their bodies down so they don't use as much energy. It's really, really fascinating. Now, she also mentioned that the groundhogs have these incisors and I brought, this is a beaver skull. Um, and a beaver is one of the relatives of the woodchuck or the groundhog. As you saw in that little clip, there was a beaver picture, but the beavers also have those incisors. So there's their front teeth and their bottom teeth. These are the teeth that are going to keep growing and growing and growing. Could you imagine if your front teeth kept growing, they would just get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you wouldn't be able to close your mouth and the bottom ones too. That would be really hard for them. And you might even notice when you looked at some of those pictures of the groundhogs, you could even see those front incisors. They kind of make a face like that. <laughs> so their teeth are kind of big, but they do have to chew on things all the time to keep those down. So you might even see beavers, woodchucks, muskrats, others, and um, porcupines. They have teeth like this, and it's able to get through some of the harder, woodier things that they need, especially beavers. These are really big because they're chew on that wood to make their beaver dams. They don't have a saw to cut down those trees to make them. They have their teeth and woodchucks also chew on a lot of things. So as she said in the video, if you see them chewing on um, something, a piece of wood, they aren't actually eating the wood. They're probably um, chewing them to grind down those teeth there because otherwise they would keep growing and growing. They're very impressive teeth. Um, they are omnivores um, and an omnivore is a creature that eats both plants and animals. So as you saw in the video, they do love to eat lots of leaves and they might eat some stems and they'll eat lots of berries, especially in the late summer into fall. They'll want to eat a lot of that because they need to store up fat so they can hibernate, but then they'll also eat some insects. So they might be looking for insects that are on the ground or underneath logs. If you've ever gone out in the woods and turned over logs, you found lots of really awesome creatures, worms and little grubs and things that are underneath those logs they'll be eating some of those too. Now their teeth, I know this is a beaver skull, but it's very similar to a groundhog. Their teeth in the back, right there, maybe you can see that the teeth in the back, right here. These are good for grinding up all of those plants. There's no teeth right here. We've got a full set of teeth, but uh, they don't have a full set of teeth here. They, these ones, um, this, Beavers are mostly um, herbivores, so these are good for grinding up. And you actually have some good teeth in the back. You'll be getting them too. Your molars and things, when they come in, um, they will help you grind up food a lot better. Um, yeah, so this is a beaver skull similar to a woodchuck or a groundhog. And there's their teeth in the front like that. And then that help grind them up, help them eat, their, eat up all of their plant food. I'm gonna put this down over here. There we go. All right. So I know she mentioned in the video, if a groundhog is up on February 2nd, that's actually not true because it's hibernation time. So do you think, let's see, maybe you could raise your, raise your hand. Do you think that our Puxatawney Phil is actually really good at predicting when spring will come? You can put it in the chat or raise your hand. See if, uh, if you think, you know, yes or no, do you think that that our Puxatawney Phil, oh, I see you there. <laughs> you think he's really good at predicting the weather? <laughs> oh, we've got, okay, we've got a couple of you, maybe he's pretty good at predicting those weathers, <laughs> that weather prediction there. Well, he did get it right last year, he said that spring was gonna come early. And around here, for sure, spring did come pretty early. I, I do remember thinking, where's all the snow? This year, he saw his shadow. And so he's saying that winter's gonna hang on for another six weeks before we start to see any spring. And right now I'm thinking that's true. I don't know though. He's only right about half the time. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not a very good meteorologist. He's not a very good at predicting what our weather is going to be, uh, which is unfortunate, but it is kind of fun to talk about him. Now, it, predicting the weather is actually a very amazing thing to do. I'm always impressed by meteorologists because they are predicting the future, the weather that's going to be happening. Um, but 
really what Phil is predicting, Poxitoni Phil is predicting is when spring is gonna come. So why do we even have seasons? You know, why, why do we have winter time when there's snow happening for us and colder temperatures? Why do we have springtime when the weather starts to get warmer? And then the summertime, we have those long days and nice hot days. And then fall when the leaves change and every and animals start to hibernate. Why do we have these change of seasons? So I was kind of thinking, how can I show you all why we have seasons in this in our world here, in this part of our world too, especially here in the Northeast, we have lovely change of season here. Well, I enlisted some help um, from my friend, Bill Nye. Um, so <laughs> he's going to show us, I was looking for all kinds of fun ways to show you why we have seasons. So I discovered that who does it best? It's Bill Nye who does it best. He has a great way of explaining why we have seasons. So I'll share my screen once again. Here we go. And we're gonna make him nice and big for you. All right, here's Bill Nye. All right, yeah, Bill Nye, explaining the seasons really, really well. Oh no, <laughs> and I hear everyone say they're not hearing any sound. Oh, I might have to try that again. All right, hold on. Let's see what I can do for you. I'll try it one, it's a really quick one, so I'll try it here. Um, essentially, there we go, go back. I hear it very loud on my end. Oops. Let me know if you hear sounds. Summertime there. So when it's summertime, 
Oh, we can hear it. Okay. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you could hear it that time. I had a hard time seeing the chat when that video was on there. So, all right, I'm glad you could hear it that time. So essentially, because our Earth is tilted just a little bit, just enough, the angle of this of the sun rays comes in different angles. And so because of that tilt, when we're tilted away from the sun, we get colder, like in the wintertime. And then if it's tilted towards the sun, those rays are much more direct and it's summertime. So that's why we have our change of seasons. And right now we're halfway between the start of winter and the start of spring. So we're kind of moving around the sun and we're getting more direct rays. You might have noticed that uh, if you get up with the sun, like I do, that you're starting to get up a little bit earlier and the sun is actually setting a little bit later in the day. So our day length, the amount of time we have sunshine is getting longer and our nights are getting shorter. So in the summertime, we have lots of hours of daylight. That's when we have our longest days. In the wintertime, on the winter solstice on December 21st, it's the shortest day because we have the shortest amount of time that we have sunlight. So it's the latest time that the sun rises and the earliest time that the sun sets. And on the summer solstice, it's the earliest that the sun rises and the latest that the sun sets. So we have a longer span of days of daylight. And that's what's happening now as we get closer and closer to spring, the equinox, we're getting closer and closer to the time of year when we will have equal amounts of daylight and nighttime. So we're getting really, really close to that. And you might notice that our days are getting a little bit longer. So it's really fun to keep track of how long we're having sunlight and keep track of what's happening outside. Um, we call that phenology. So looking for signs of spring, which um, depending on where you are today <laughs> in the country and able to, to get outside, you can still get outside in the winter, just dress properly. Um, but looking for signs of spring today, oh, I don't know how much we'll see here, especially in the Hudson Valley. I see the snow is still blowing around outside my home right now. Um, but as the weeks progress, as we get closer and closer and closer to the spring equinox on March 20th, um, you will start to see signs of spring. The snow is going to melt and the ground is going to thaw and the flowers that have been waiting all winter long underneath the leaves and in the soil are gonna start to grow and bloom again. The trees are gonna start to get their leaves you can definitely go out and look for signs of spring in the coming weeks, of course. Now, Puxitani Phil, as I mentioned, he should be hibernating right now. He really does wait until spring when the ground has thawed and when there are plants for him to eat. Right now, if he were to come out of hibernation, there isn't much for him to eat. He'd have a hard time, which is why he's hibernating. He's taking, he's taking advantage of these uh, long nights, I guess, and short days to uh, sleep it away. And he's conserving energy that way. He doesn't have to try and keep himself warm by shivering. He doesn't have to try and find food. He is all set being uh, hibernating in his burrow, which is pretty awesome that he has different rooms too. He even has a bathroom and like a living room and a bedroom. He's got everything. He's set right there. Um, but us uh, being up in the spring, in the winter and the spring, we can see these signs of, of spring. And Phil's going to wait until there's food available for him later on in the spring. About six weeks from now, we we'll might be seeing some groundhogs come out. Now, what you can do in the meantime is shadows. I mean, that's what Puxitani Phil is all about. This is how we're making these predictions about when spring will come, is does he see a shadow or doesn't he see his shadow? So shadows happen because of light. We have a light source and outside, of course, that light source is the sun. Inside, we've got our lights. I've got overhead lights there. Um, and I'm looking outside today and it's a cloudy day here, but maybe where you are, the sun is shining somewhere. But you can do this anytime, indoors or outdoors. You can track shadows. Um, and it's going to change as we go through the seasons. As I said, our days get longer. The angle of the sun changes as we go from winter to spring to summer to fall. So you can track these changes. I was going to suggest, as I was planning this out, I was going to suggest that you 
go outside with some chalk, maybe in your driveway, and keep track of draw your shadow. Today, I can't see my driveway with all of the snow, but you can definitely do this once the snow is gone. You can track your shadows. You can track shadows in your house as well. You can put a piece of paper down next to a window, and you can um, track where the sun is coming in and how it's moving and all these different shadows. So there's a lot of really cool things to do. And we actually, last spring, um, we at Mohonk Preserve made these awesome videos called Nature Nuggets. And it was encouraging everyone to get outside, um, even when the weather wasn't so great, but to explore the world outside. And one of our educators, Kim, she did one on um, shadows. So this is a great activity that you can do outside or inside. So today might be a good day um, for some inside action <laughs> because outside drawing in the snow might be kind of hard. Um, but I have this awesome video about what, about how to uh, do these shadows. Kim's did this awesome job and she has an awesome son that um, helped her with this. So let's see what she has for us. We'll make that big. Hi everyone, I'm Kim Stiefler, Education Coordinator for Student Programs. Welcome to Nature Nuggets. I'm joined today with my son, Soren. For this nugget, you will need paper, pencil or a marker, a clipboard or something hard to lean on, interesting objects that will create your shadows, and sunlight. Light travels in a straight line until it hits an object. When an object is placed in the light's path, the part of the light that reaches the object will be blocked while the rest of the light keeps going. The blocked part becomes a shadow. Have your child place an object next to the paper so it creates a shadow. Now trace the shadow onto the paper and create your artwork. Drawing with light and shadow is an easy and fun activity. It gets kids outside and it helps them to recognize and understand several important concepts in physics. Do the shadows stay the same? How do they change with time? Are the shadows larger, the same size, or smaller than the objects? When you rotate the objects, what happens to the shadows? For our final study, we found this great shadow. So we just put a piece of paper down in its path and began our tracing there. An extension is painting or coloring the shadow art. Lastly, an indoor option can be done one of two ways. You can use a lamp as the light source or sit by a window and take advantage of natural light. Thanks so much for joining us today, everyone. See you next time. All right, so you saw lots of different ways to um, track shadows. Definitely, if you uh, don't have a snowy day today, get outside and uh, and do some shadow drawing. You can do shadow drawing inside too, as you saw, if you have a lamp, you can do that or take advantage of sunlight coming in um, and track shadows, draw shadows, put objects, find lots of really cool objects. You saw that some of the objects that Kim and her son used were natural objects. So they might've been branches or a cool shrub that was outside and she just put the paper down and Soren was able to trace it that way or brought um, objects from inside outside to trace those. So there was an awesome stegosaurus it looked like um, and a cool piece of art that was really neat. And then the Pez dispenser inside, I think that was the Grinch that, <laughs> that Soren was drawing. So you can find objects around your house when you use the lamp today to draw different shadows, um, you could even try doing shadow puppets and do a shadow play today. Um, maybe you do the, uh, the the bird, you know, to see what different what different animals you could make using shadows and how to move your body. Um, and you make a dark room with a light and, and try and get some of those shadows going today. And if you're very ambitious and you have a big piece of paper, maybe you could even have a friend um, make a shadow 
shadow and on the wall and then you can trace that shadow you do the little barking dog or something like that there's lots of different things that you can do with shadows since we're talking about shadows today with Poxitani Phil. And of course, as we get closer and closer to the spring equinox, go outside, look for signs of spring or signs that winter is still hanging around too. Explore the snow, look at all the different little snowflakes and things. Look for some buds on trees. See if there's any buds on the trees. They're probably not ready to open, but they're there and they're waiting for the springtime to come to open. So get outside, go for nature walks, do some shadow drawing inside or outside. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with that. And of course, we will um, wait for spring to come. Phil says it's not coming for another six weeks, but you know, he's not always right either. <laughs> Well, that is all I have for you. If you have any questions, I have a few moments here to take any questions about groundhogs, mammals, shadows, seasons, anything at all. If you have a question for me, feel free to write it in the chat and I am happy to answer the question. Let's see if there's any questions that pop up. kind of quiet maybe no or maybe you're taking time to type <laughs> any questions about mammals shadows I can hear the wind outside right now. <laughs> See some snow blowing. So I'm going to think that Phil might be right this year. Ah, oh, I don't think we have any questions today. It's pretty quiet there. I know that they're um, our kindergarten class. Maybe they have some questions and it's just taking a moment, but. Oh, it's oh. also my phone is ringing. <laughs> No one ever calls me and this is the time that someone uh, calls. Ah, all right, there's a question. Groundhogs, are they boys or girls? There can be either boys or girls, just like there's boys and girls for people and dogs and cats, they're mammals. So in order to get more mammals, you need to have a boy and a girl and then you get more mammals that way. So yeah, groundhogs can be a boy or girl. It's just that the one in Pennsylvania is named Phil. Um, so, <laughs> so that one is a boy. Poxitani Phil is a boy, but there are girl groundhogs too. That's a good question. Any other questions? Oh. That's a good question. What do I predict? Oh, goodness. You know, I think a couple of weeks ago, I might have said that we're going to have an early spring. Um, but this wonderful snowstorm that we've had and kind of looking at the forecast that the meteorologists, the scientists have put together, looks like we might be staying kind of cool. I think spring will come in March, just like Phil said. So I'm going to agree with Phil today. Oh, also a great question. Charlie wants to know, and I think if I remember, Charlie's the one in Virginia, so a little further south than where uh, I am, how much snow is on the ground where you are? That's a great question. It is hard to tell because it's blowing around so much that, uh, that there's a lot of snow in some places and not as much as another. Maybe um, 
close to a foot of snow. <laughs> so I will be going out and um, clearing a path out of my house when I'm done here. So <laughs> I and Chloe saw a groundhog once and that's really cool to see them. I have seen one once as well. So it, they're very well camouflaged. Their fur is brown. So seeing them is really good because they're super camouflaged and they, they can blend in with their surroundings. And you know, they're afraid of people too. We're big and scary. So chances are they're gonna run away before we ever see them. So the fact that Chloe's been able to see a groundhog, that's great. That's great. Oh. All right, that might be the end of our questions. Unless someone's frantically typing, I don't know. <laughs> well, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I'm so glad that we had a nice audience, that we had a kindergarten class join us too. So that is wonderful. And we have people from all over as well. So we get someone from Virginia and we have uh, someone um, in New Jersey. We got a class from New Jersey as well. So that's really great. Thank you for joining us and learning about groundhogs. I hope you had fun and that you learned something today. Um, we will have more programming coming up in the spring. And uh, I'm already trying to think of some other good virtual program programming that we can do um, just like this one. Um, March is a good time to do some to do some virtual programming on the changing of seasons as well. So I'll, I'll think on that one. And um, I will be sending out, as I said, this is being recorded. So I will have the recording for you if you want to hang on to it and rewatch it. Um, and also um, I can send out some of the links too um, for activities. Um, so there's also one on sun prints that I can send to everyone who's registered. Um, again, thanks so much for joining and uh, we hope to see you out on the land at some point and for other programming as well. So bye everyone. Have a good Groundhog Day. Bye. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, but <laughs> they're waving. <laughs> Yay. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining gonna say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Mom. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.